Hey guys, welcome back. For those who don't know me, I'm Sabya, second year MBBS student. Today, I would like to share some knowledge in general about malaria, what I learned in class. Namely, second year students must focus well to get good marks in your subjects. So guys, there are two things, dengue and malaria. Dengue mosquito, which is Aedes mosquito, usually bites in morning and for malaria female anopheles mosquito usually bites between evening to midnight 12 am malaria is not caused by female anopheles mosquito she is just a vector carrying a microbe in its body which is plasmodium now the microbe plasmodium has four species plasmodium falciparum which is most common in India, Plasmodium vivax, which is most common in whole world generally, Plasmodium malariae, it mimics nephrotic syndrome and Plasmodium ovi. Now nephrotic syndrome has four main features. First one is profuse albuminuria. Albumin will be released in urine, hypoalbuminemia. It decreases in albumin because it is released in urine. Generalized edema, edema in all over the body, not in any particular part and hyperlipidemia, increase in lipid content in our body. Now life cycle of malaria. There most students face problems. There is a mosquito containing plasmodium micro in its saliva. It will come to a human, sit on its skin and bite. From the saliva, it will release plasmodium in the bloodstream of human. Plasmodium released in bloodstream is in the form of sporozoids. Those sporozoids through the bloodstream will travel, reach to the liver and stay in hepatocytes, means liver cells. These liver cells will act as a host cell. The sporozoid will stay in the liver cell as a parasite. In a hepatocyte, the sporozoid will keep on asexually multiplying, multiplying, multiplying and form many Merozoids. Term number two. Merozoids. Merozoids will be excess in number. The hepatocyte, the liver cell, will burst. All the merozoids will be released in bloodstream. After seven to ten days, merozoid will enter in the RBC again and keep on multiplying, multiplying again until that RBC burst. This particular step, I would like to elaborate a bit. Merozoid in the bloodstream will enter in the RBC. It will form a ring kind of structure called as trophozoid term number three trophozoid it will break into pieces which will again be called as merozoid because the merozoids will multiply 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 the rbc will burst and the merozoids again will be released in the bloodstream so every time the rbc bursts will feel chills fever and sweating which are the characteristic features of malaria so now you know why you felt chills fever and sweating while you had malaria and after that it will eventually lead into death after several or sexual multiplications of merozoid some merozoids will go through sexual cycle but some merozoids won't go into sexual cycle and stay inside the rbc those merozoids will be called as hypnozoids term number four hypnozoids it will go into a dormant stage, means it won't do anything basically. Dormant stage is called hypnosis. Hypnozoid will stay in hypnosis. But on the other side, sexual cycle, those merozoid will form sexual form of plasmodium parasite, which is chemitocyte. So plasmodium chemitocytes will be formed. Female and male chemitocytes in the RBC. Now a female anopheles mosquito which is not infected means which doesn't have any parasite in its saliva it will come and sit on the infected human body suck up the blood through blood female and male gametocytes of plasmodium parasite enters in the saliva of uninfected female anopheles mosquito the gametocytes will stay in the saliva of mosquito will be digested by the mosquito will convert into mature sex cells which are gametes. The gametes fuse and convert into zygote. The zygote will slowly slowly develop into oocyte. Now that oocyte contains sporozoite and that sporozoite will keep on multiplying as its habit and the oocyte will rupture and burst. All the sporozoites are released in the saliva of female anopheles mosquito. Now the uninfected mosquito became infected. 
and will go to another human being to infect him. where the person will feel really cold and will have vigorous shivering. Number two is heat stage. He will feel intense heat and a throbbing headache. Throbbing headache means many times you people must have felt like someone is hammering on a head. That is throbbing headache. Third stage is sweating stage where he will have profuse sweating. Means a lot of sweating. The other than that, some other features are vomiting, jaundice, Tender hepatosplenomegaly. Tender means when we touch that person, he will have pain. Hepato means liver, spleno means spleen, megaly means increase in size. So increase in size of liver and spleen. And tender means when we will touch the, his liver and his spleen, he will feel pain. And the fourth one is anemia, especially normocytic and normochromic anemia. Normocytic means all the RPCs will be of normal size, same size. And normochromic, chromic means color, means all the RPCs will be normal red color. Normocytic, normochromic anemia can be caused by first causes anemia of chronic disorder, anemia of renal failure, anemia of liver disease, and the early iron deficiency anemia called microcytic hypochromic anemia. The size of RBC will be small which is microcytic and the color will be pale which is hypochromic. Hypo means less, chromic means color due to efficiency of RBC. Now there are some laboratory methods by which you can diagnose malaria. First one is microscopic diagnosis with the help of microscope. Second one is immunological diagnosis as related to antibody and antigens present in us. And third is molecular diagnosis. In microscopic diagnosis, three things can be used. First, light microscope, which is a type of microscope. Second, fluorescent microscope. And third, QBC, qualitative buffy coat. By we see our RBCs in the microscope, we need to stain our smear. We will stain with the help of Romanovsky stains which helps them differentiating between different cells which are present in our bloodstream through the microscope. So there are four Romanovsky stains. First one, Jimsa stain, Field stain, Tide stain and Leishman stain. I'm sure you must have heard about Leishman stain. If all the RBCs are attacked, it is due to Plasmodium alpha. If only young RBCs are attacked by those merozoids, it is due to Plasmodium vivax. Now, how to treat malaria? Which I am going to make a different video on it in detail. But this is just in short. So there is something called prophylaxis treatment. Prophylaxis treatment means you did not get malaria, but you are taking those medicines so that in future you won't get malaria. which are fast acting and there are some drugs which will act really slow. So the fast acting drugs are chloroquine, quinine, mefloquine, atovaquine and artemisin. And some drugs which act really slow are proguanil, pyrimethamine, sulfonamides and tetrosin. If a patient has very severe malaria, we can give corticosteroids like dextamethasone. In case a pregnant lady gets malaria, there are three drugs which are safe, chloroquine, mefloquine and primaquine. If a child gets malaria, two drugs which are really safe are quinine and primaquine. But we must not give mefloquine. Why? Because it can cause neuropsychiatric toxicity in child. Now first line drug of choice is chloroquine. It is a prototype drug and 
it can be used for prophylactic use. Now there are some other anti-malarial drugs which are Amodiaquin, Piperaquin, Mefloquin, Quinine, Primaquin, Tefinoquin, Bulaquin, Atovacone, Pyrimethamine, Proguanil, Halofrentine, Artemisinin compound. Artisunate derivatives which are Artemether, Artemether and Artisunate and then comes combined drugs where we will combine two or more drugs to provide a particular treatment. When chloroquine doesn't work, we are going to use a combined group of drugs. The examples are Artemether and Lumefantrine and the second one is Artemisin and Tetracycline. Tetracycline will be used as 400 mg. Other drugs which are used for prophylaxis. Four of the drugs are Chloroquine, Mefloquine, Atovaquine, Atovaquone and Doxycycline. But the drugs which cannot be used to prevent malaria. Quinine, Artemisinin compounds, Pyrimethamine sulfadoxine, Amodiaquine. Now for the acute attack. Acute attack means a person will get chills, shivering, high fever and sweating and then he will return to normal temperature that is acute attack will give chloroquine but for the radical cure means completely eradicating plasmodium parasite from our body we can use chloroquine and primaquine and all i explained right now was just for knowledge do not go and take these medicines by yourself as soon as you got malaria you must must go to your physician and get your treatment. If you felt this video useful for the exams, do mention in the comment box. And I will see you guys again in my next video. So bye for now and be safe.